Biggest news of the week translated for Gen Z. The Pentagon failed another audit. This is the sixth time in a row. They don't want us to know where the stuff went. By the stuff, I mean $3.8 trillion of assets and $4 trillion in liabilities. They had 1,600 people looking for it. They did 700 site visits, but they couldn't find it. You're telling me special forces can find Saddam Hussein, but they can't fucking count? I don't buy it. But what does Congress think? If they don't pass the next audit, they should have a 1% penalty. When your taxes are late, you pay 5%. I think there should be a higher fine for losing nukes. Somali pirates took an Israeli ship. They are so back. It was so over. They didn't capture a ship since like 2017. Speaking of Israel, there have been three rounds of hostage exchanges between Palestine and Israel, many of which are women and children. There's been a six day pause in the fighting between Israel and Gaza, but Israel raided a refugee camp in Jenin in the West Bank and killed two Palestinian boys. They also dropped airstrikes on Damascus on an airport in Syria, so it doesn't feel very ceasefire-y to me. Three Palestinian college-age boys were wearing keffiyeh and they were shot on their way to Thanksgiving dinner by a 48-year-old white male in Burlington, Vermont. Let's talk about the Democratic Republic of Congo. What is underway in the DRC has been called a genocide. Six million people have been displaced. They've got the largest cobalt deposit in the world. Tutsis in eastern Congo Congo are at risk, also in Uganda and Rwanda. I have sat in on asylum trials of those responsible for the Rwandan genocide in 1994. This is just as much ethnically motivated as it is caused by colonization and U.S. intervention. My mentor is from the Democratic Republic of Congo. He's the nephew of Patrice Lumumba, who was the first democratically elected leader of Congo and freed the slaves from Belgium's colonial rule when they were extracting rubber from the Katanga region. Patrice was assassinated by the CIA. And so while it might seem very disconnected from the United States. What's going on in the DRC today is absolutely the legacy of U.S. intervention.